and holiness, without which no man shall see God. Ha. Within an hour, it was already in the uh, internet that Pastor Adibri says, don't pay tight. I didn't say that. Fortunately, everything I said is on record. I went to forward to tell my people. I said it is wrong to tie you down to 10% at a time when, by the grace of God, you should be far, far, far above 10%. I told them a story. Not a new story, a story they have had several times. That several years ago, I went to Tulsa to attend Kenneth Higgins camp meeting. And uh, they wanted to take an offering for their Bible college. And one man came to the altar together with his wife and asked for permission to speak. And they gave him the microphone. And he said, I beg all of you who are here today, give very well. Because whatever all of you give, that's what my wife and I alone will give. And we were about 17,000 people. Uh, what, what is this man saying? He said, anything all of you put together can give. That's what my wife and I alone will give. Ha. So some people say, this man is in trouble. Those who didn't want to give before now began to give. At the end, he said they should count everything. They counted and it was $3.5 million that was contributed. They announced it. And we thought, hey, you are the one who got yourself into trouble. He took the microphone and said, brethren, is this all you can do? Ah. So I said, this man knows something I don't know. Uh, as soon as the service ended, I cornered him. Sir, please, I am from Africa. I came all the way from Africa. Tell me your secret. Because you must know something that I don't know. For you to do this kind of thing. He said, you want to know? I said, yes, sir. He said, five years ago, I started a business with $500. And I told God, this is your business. You are my senior partner. I will not insult you by giving you 10%. I will give you 90% and I will make do with the remaining 10%. So it's up to you to bless the business. He said that was five years ago. He said this year, the turnover of that little company is $50 million. Hey. I said, thank you very much. And I came back home. And from that day onward, I began to increase the percentage I give to God. I told those of my friends who were around, this is what I learned over there. Today, I am not close to 90%. But I'm far from 10%. I'm telling you the story I told my children on Thursday. So I said it is wrong to tie you down to 10% when God would have taken you to a higher percentage. I said 
at the beginning, when you were just born again, 10% is okay. It's the minimum God expects from you. But since then, you should have grown. That as you grow in the Lord, you should grow in praising him, grow in winning souls, grow in praying, and grow in giving. In other words, I said the minimum for beginners is what God calls 10 percent. So I told my young, young ones, I said, so from now on, begin to increase what you give to God. <laughs> you know, the only thing they, they put on, on the internet, of all that thing that I said, is that Pastor Adiboy apologize. And therefore, people should no longer pay their tithes. I said tithes should be minimum. It should be for beginners. What I didn't tell them then was <laughs> there was a woman, Mrs. Graham Douglas of Port Harcourt. If you know those who are close to her, she's, she's gone to be with the Lord now. You can check my story. She got born again and came to me and said, Daddy, I know how much I have wasted on parties before I got born again. I am not going to be giving 10%. I will be giving God at least 20% from now till I die. She was in a very poor situation at that time. She took that decision. God looked down on her and began to bless her. Before she died, she had become a board member of a very big bank. Because when you trade with God, you will not suffer a loss. It, what the word of God says is when you sow generously you will reap bountifully that's the, that's the Bible so I just want to make it clear I didn't say don't pay your title what I said is that that should be your minimum that's what I said now to add to that one of my pastors went on the internet and he said he wanted to preach a sermon on why people should not pay tithes and I watched the sermon in fact, when he was talking about preaching the sermon, I saw the way he was adjusting his uh, jacket. So I thought, ah, this man is ready for something serious. So I, I was ready. Quickly got my pen and paper. I wanted to learn some heavy stuff. I was disappointed. Because the sermon he preached was just a repetition of what other people have been saying. Forgive me for saying so. Very, very shallow sermon. He said we shouldn't pay tithe because Jesus didn't collect tithes. I said, ha. Jesus was not a parish pastor. He was a world evangelist. Is that correct? And the Bible says there were certain women 
you can read it in Luke chapter 8 from verse 1 to 3. Who just gathered themselves together and they said, we will be the treasurers for Jesus Christ. We will maintain his uh, ministry. Now, I know of a bishop. It is of blessed memory now. Who said he too will gather some women together to be supporting his ministry. So wherever he went, he would take these five women along. I didn't ask whether they were married or not. But one day I cornered him. I said, brother, who are these women following you everywhere? Your wife will be at home. And these women will be following you everywhere. Oh, he said they are angels of mercy. I said, sir, I hope they are not angels of sin. No. <laughs> Imagine somebody telling you that wherever Daddy Gio goes, he will ask Mommy Gio to stay at home and he will collect some five beautiful women and take them everywhere he goes and call them angels of mercy. Will I be able to stand before you and preach holiness again? And then the, the thing this pastor went on to say, the apostles never collected tithes. I said, that is true. The apostles were not parish pastors. The Bible says, the people or the Christians of the first time sold everything they had and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Now, there's a very big problem if somebody says that's the way we should be doing it now. Number one, if they say that's the way we should be doing it, then <laughs> I should tell all of you to go and sell everything you have <laughs> and bring the money to Daddy Gio. Number two, it will mean we will say that anybody who wants to become a Christian must be ready to sell everything he has and bring the money to the church. You know the, the kind of problem that we create. But not only that, it was when the disciples, when the apostles were doing that, that politics, first of all, entered into the church. When certain people of a particular tribe began to feed their members better than people who are not of their tribe. If we are to follow the examples of the apostles, eh? <laughs> then if the general oversight is Yoruba, the Igbos will suffer some hunger. If the general oversight is Igbo, oh, God have mercy on the outside members. It can't work. It didn't work then. The first time Apostle Peter had to use his power to kill was when a husband and wife sold their land and didn't bring all the money. I'm sure you know the story. What's the name of the couple? Ananias and Sapphira. It's, if this thing didn't work then, how can it work now? So I didn't say don't pay your tithe. I did not say so. What I said is that should even be your minimum. 
that you should ask God for grace that as you are growing the Lord your percentage that you are giving into the work of his kingdom should be more than 10 that's what I said that it is wrong for somebody to say you must not go beyond 10% that will be wrong I'll be slowing you down and so clear but I know this again of course <laughs> before the sun rises this will be on the internet all over the world again let me add this one of mine knows much more than I do but let's do it this way particularly you members if your pastor says he doesn't want tight don't leave his church home. if he says all he wants is offering give him offering but if you're Ten percent. Where the pastor says, "Ah, we can collect tithe. We will use it for the glory of God." Hey, then give that pastor your tithe. <laughs> so you don't quarrel with your pastor, and you don't quarrel with God. Your conscience will be clear. I'm making that appeal. I'm making an appeal to all my brothers all over the world who believe that they know much more than I do. I agree. I've always told you I don't know much. I don't, I never went to Bible school. The little I know, most of it, the Holy Spirit taught me. If you know the truth much more than I do, the Bible says you are to speak the truth in love. You don't have to quarrel to tell the truth. Tell the word that the boy is wrong. No problem. So Drew, um, probably the most stupid of all people. That's why, <laughs> that's why God chose me to be a pastor anyway. The Bible says it. He chooses the foolish ones. So I admit that. And then there are people who, I know there are some of my children who will say, Daddy, eh, if you talk like this, people will be insulting you. Yes, yes, yes. Ah. Years ago, when God took me to the school of humility, one of the things he revealed, and I shared it with those who were around then, is that the word humility and the word humus, you know, humus soil, black soil, they have the same root. That for you to say you are to want to really be humble, you must be ready to be like the soil. People walk on the soil. They smack his head with diggers. At times they defecate on the ground. Does he talk? 
Does it fight back? That's humility now. Lay on the floor. Let people trample over you. But the Bible says, when you lay yourself on the floor like that, the God will lift you up. If you want dominion, you <laughs> we didn't talk about that during the lecture. You must be humble. So let them call me names. That's no problem. But just help me to pray that they will forgive me for everything I've said that is wrong. And let there be peace. Let all of us become united so that God can heal our land when we pray. Before I close, thank you for your attention. There's something, one, one more thing that I need to apologize about. This one doesn't concern many of those people outside. It concerns you. You know, I've always said, when I want to let you know how much I love my wife, I've always said that you can do whatever you like to me, but if you dare touch my wife, I will kill you. How many of you have had that one before? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I said that. Because the Bible says, thou shalt not kill. So um, I apologize. And so, in that case, what, what are you going to do? You are now opening the door for us to attack your wife. No, I've discovered a better prayer. <laughs> what is the better prayer? You want me to tell you? Uh, <laughs> I will only tell you in proverb. You know, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, when Paul was on the way to Damascus, the Christians in Damascus, they didn't know he was coming. They didn't know trouble was coming. But God stopped them on the way. By the time he arrived with the, among the people that he was going to kill and take to prison. He has already become a brother. Uh, uh -huh. so, so you get the story. <laughs> Let somebody shout hallelujah. So it is time to pray. Uh, just one more thing uh, before, <laughs> before I forget. If you are my son, whether a pastor or not a pastor, and you discover that I am wrong because I have said it before, the first thing you learn in advanced mathematics is that anybody can be wrong. I'm sure I've told you that one before. And I told my children on Thursday, it is possible to be right and wrong at the same time. And I gave them an illustration. I said, I said, as a scientist, I know. For years, we taught that light travels in straight lines, which is correct. Light never bend. To take corners. No, it goes straight. But later on, we discovered that light does not travel as a rod. It travels straight, but not as a rod, but in waves. It goes galloping like the waves of the sea. That's how light travels. So initially, we were right. It travels in straight lines. 
but we didn't know that he traveled in waves. So it is possible to be right and wrong at the same time. And I'm always ready to learn. So if you as my child discovered something that I'm doing wrong or I'm saying wrong, please come and tell me. I won't chase you away. I won't say, who are you? Uh, don't you know I'm the general overseer? You little boy. <laughs> uh, by now you should know that if I have any weakness, by the grace of God, pride is not one of them. No, not at all. If you discover that I've, I'm doing something wrong or I've said something wrong, come to me and explain to me quietly. Don't put it on the internet. You know why? A child that exposes the nakedness of his father is in serious trouble. You know the story of Noah now. Noah got drunk. Hmm? Great man of God. He got drunk. Inside his tent too. He didn't go to the bar. He was in his house. And he got drunk. And he was on the floor, naked. And the youngest son came in and saw Papa naked. <laughs> and he, he ran out to go and tell the other two brothers, Hey, come and look, oh, Papa is drunk. He's lying on the floor, naked. The elder brothers, they say, ah, we will not even see the nakedness of our father. So they took a piece of cloth and they walked the back walls so that they won't see the nakedness of their father and covered Papa with cloth. You know what followed when Papa woke up? Don't expose the nakedness of your father. It is dangerous, so God will bless you. All right. Uh, have you forgiven me for anything I've said wrong? Uh, if, if, if at least you are forgiving me, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> All right. Now you stand on your feet. You are going to pray one more prayer before you go home. You're going to cry to the Almighty God and say, Father, the grace to serve you more than ever before. Give it to me. Let me praise you more. Let me serve you more. Let me witness more. And let me give more. Give me the grace to serve you more than ever before. Pray that prayer. And let there be unity among the children of God in the body of Christ. Let there be unity so that our prayers will not be hindered, so that our land will be healed. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The God I serve the one who has made me your father. We establish it when I say, you will be forever blessed. Yeah. Every day of your life, you will get richer and richer. Yeah. Your pocket will never be dry.
you will never beg for food. Your glory will shine brighter and brighter. And you will never know shame. God will go with you as you go. This month will be full of miracles for you. By the next time I see you, you'll be shouting louder, hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. You can go in peace. And the pastors, God bless you. You can go from here.